glad you could join me. Today, we're going to be talking about measures of position, specifically z-scores. Now, z-scores are great. They allow us to compare data values between two different populations, each population having its own mean and standard deviation. It's a way for us to compare apples to oranges, if you want to think about it like that. So what a z-score is, is that it's, it represents the distance that each data value is from its own mean. And it gives it to us in units of standard deviation. Now the z-score is a unitless value. Besides the fact that it allows us to compare, we also can tell whether the data value is greater than or less than the mean. For example, if your data value was greater than the mean, you would have a positive z-score. And if the data value is less than the mean, you would have a negative z-score. For example, say you had a z-score of negative 2.31. That would indicate that your data value was 2.31 standard deviations below the mean. So, let's talk baseball. Say we have two teams, the Yankees and the Mets. And the Yankees hit 205 home runs in their season. The Mets hit 198 home runs. And you have these fans arguing back and forth. No, the Yankees had a better season. No, the Mets had a better season. How could we compare? Well, we can use z-scores to answer the question of who had the better relative home run hitting season. So let's look at our data. The Yankees play for the American League. They hit 205 home runs. Now the American League had a mean of 192 home runs for this season with a standard deviation of 36 home runs. Now the Mets play for the National League. They hit 198 home runs this season. The mean for the National League is 186.9 home runs with a standard deviation of 28.7 home runs. Now, how can we compare these two different data values from two different populations? Well, we're going to use the z-score to standardize our x values. We're going to convert these two x values of interest to z-scores in units of standard deviation. And then we can compare z-score to z-score to see who had the better home run season. So let's work the math. First, let's convert our Yankees. We're going to convert our value of 205 home runs into a z-score. We're going to subtract the mean of 192 and divide by the standard deviation. This gives us a z-score of 0.36 standard deviations. Now let's do the same thing for the Mets, converting that score to a z-score. For the Mets, we're going to use their home run of 198. Again, we're going to minus the mean of 186.9, and we're going to divide by the standard deviation of 28.7. This is going to give us a z-score of 0.39. So what does this mean? What's it telling us? Well, the nice thing about z-scores is the fact that, as I said before, it is a unitless value. It's just in terms of standard deviations. 
So what this means is that the Yankees' home run season of 205 was actually 0.36 standard deviations above their, Nash, above their American League mean. While the Mets' home run season of 198 home runs was 0.39 standard deviations above the mean. This tells us that the Mets actually had a much better home run hitting season. We are using each population's mean and standard deviation to compare between two x values. So the Mets actually have bragging rights. They had a much better home run hitting season because their z-score was greater than the Yankees' z-score. I hope this has helped your understanding of measures of position using z-scores when comparing data values between two different populations. Thanks for joining me and have a nice day.